Good afternoon. My name is Rania Mancarios. I'm the CEO of Crime Stoppers of Houston. Thank you all for being here for this important news conference. Today I'm joined by City of Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner, Houston Police Chief Troy Finner, HPD Department Homicide Detective Nina Sharp, Director of Victim, Crime Stoppers Director of Victim Services Andy Kahn, and most importantly, family members of Elsa McKeska, her husband Steve McKeska, and her daughters Harley McKeska, Lauren H Hannigan, and Angel Rocha. News conferences like this are incredibly difficult, especially when they involve another innocent victim senselessly murdered by the violent crime we are seeing throughout the city of Houston and Harris County. First and foremost, we want to extend our deepest condolences to the McKeska family. We really are so very sorry. And I think any one of us who can imagine a mom simply going to the gym in the morning can put ourselves in their shoes. We are heartbroken, but please know that we will not stop until we find those responsible for Elsa's murder. That is the very least we can do for their family and for so, uh, so many other surviving family members of homicide. The agencies represented here today are committed to doing whatever we can to stop the maddening acts of violence that are occurring on a daily basis. As an organization dedicated to public safety and crime prevention, we don't simply show up on a press conference day to sound the alarm on crime. On the contrary, daily, daily, we are actively, methodically, tirelessly, and relentlessly working with stakeholders, community members, elected official, law enforcement legislators, victim families, and more to mitigate the unimaginable violence we are seeing now. The shootings, the loss of life, the stories of people being followed home, the home invasions, the assault, the repeat offenders being released over and over and over again, only so they can reoffend over and over and over again. It's a perfect storm that's wreaking havoc on our community, and we are trying to use every tool to stop it. But we are joining others in asking, when does this stop? When does it stop? To say that the spike in crime is wholly tied to guns on the streets is unfair. To say that the spike in crime is wholly tied to COVID is unfair. And to ignore the impact of felony bond reform, quite honestly, is unfair. This determined multi-agency collaboration led by our mayor, Mayor Sylvester Turner, who I assure you calls us over and over and over again and is doing so much to ensure the safety of this city along with his chief, Chief Finner. They are working around the clock, but we need you, the community, to pay attention, please, and to get involved. Join us today by reporting any information regarding this case and any other unsolved case in the greater Houston area. Our tip line is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to take your tips 100% anonymously. We will never know who you are when you call us, and we will offer a cash reward, as you know. With that, I welcome Mayor Turner. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Rania. Um, and let me just say, um, uh, let me thank um, you and Crime Stoppers for all that you all do on a, a daily basis to keep Houstonians safe. And I appreciate your partnership in today's announcement and other public safety initiatives as, as we move forward. Um, I'm also pleased to be standing here this afternoon with Houston Police Chief Chief Fenner, um, and I appreciate uh, so very much uh, the family of Elsa McCaska uh, for being uh, with us today. Uh, there are two several things um, that we want to accomplish today. Number one, uh, to show our support uh, for this family and so many other families who have been the victims of senseless crime being committed in our city. To Steve McCaska, Harley McCaska, Lauren Hannigan, and Nicole Rocha, let me express on behalf of this entire city uh, our condolences uh, and our support for this, for this family. Uh, we are not in their shoes, uh, but certainly we can offer our condolences and our prayers and our support. Uh, we were all outraged, I know that I was, uh, by uh, Ms. McCaskill's tragic and senseless murder, and we stand uh, in solidarity uh, to find uh, those individuals who are responsible uh, for her death. Uh, like others, I saw the video of Ms. McCaskill, 
as she drove up to her gym, uh, as she often did early in those morning hours. A vehicle with a couple of, couple of cowardly criminals pulled up beside her vehicle, and one or two suspects got out and shot and killed her. It was a heinous crime, uh, and we certainly want to find the shooters uh, and all those who were accomplices in this matter, get them arrested, tried in our court of law, and convicted. Um, and that is why today um, I am announcing that I have raised an additional uh, uh, $10,000 to add to the existing $5,000 rewar uh, reward offered by Crime Stoppers Houston for information leading to the identification and arrest of this suspect that makes the total reward to $15,000. Uh, let me just say that it's important for all of us in this city to participate in the resolution of crimes. It's not just law enforcement, but all of us have a role to play. And I'm announcing today that along with other businesses, local business owners, uh, that we are, uh, that they have generously agreed to give even more uh, to raise the reward amount to other crimes uh, that have been committed in our city, uh, those crimes uh, that will be identified by HPD, and we will be adding to, those, uh, to that amount as well on several other cases, even beyond this one. Someone out there knows uh, something about what happened uh, uh, starting today. The enhanced reward in the Elsa McKeska case is an opportunity and incentive uh, for you to do the right thing, uh, to pick up the phone and call Crime Stoppers uh, Houston to help get these dangerous people off of our street before somebody else is victimized by them. Mrs. McCasker was a wife and a mother, and she had many close friends who loved her dearly, and we know the reward cannot bring her back, but it is one way to support this family and to allow justice to come to this family as quickly as possible. This is one way to find the persons responsible for taking her life and permanently changing the lives of her family members and friends. There is way too much crime and gun violence uh, in our city. It is not enough to say that it's happening all over our country. Quite frankly, our primary concern is what's happening right here in the city of Houston. And some of the homicides are related to family violence. Others are linked to gangs and drugs or some other type of disturbance. But we want to use every available tool that we have in our toolbox to reduce and solve these crimes as quickly as possible. The circumstances for each murder may be different, but the crime rate is unacceptable and must come down. And we mourn the loss of all life and share the heartaches of the victim's loved ones. Violent crime is up, but we all have a responsibility to help to bring it down. And we certainly can do that in this particular case. I want to commend Chief Fenner for recently holding a law enforcement summit to discuss coordination and sharing of resources to identify repeat offenders, make arrests, and solve crimes. The summit included local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies, and they will meet again later this month, but we must do what we can today. And just like we have raised in a very short period of time, close to $40,000 to put on several of these cases, I suspect that over the next couple of weeks or days, businesses will contribute even more to increase the amount of reward dollars that can go to people who can provide information. And let me just say, all of us can play a role. Somewhere in this city or somewhere in this region, somebody knows some information or have information on what happened to Ms. McCaska. I'm asking you to look at these family members and the pain that they will permanently share. And I'm asking Houstonians to do the right thing and provide us with the information that can lead to the arrest and the conviction of the persons responsible for this crime. There should be no safe place in our city for people who are murdering people in our city. And I'm asking all of us to join forces and let's work together to solve these crimes. At this point, let me, uh, let me yield. I believe the, the daughters would like to say something. Um, 
I'm Lauren Harrigan, Elsa McKeska's daughter. I want to start off by saying thank you to everybody in Houston, HPD, the mayor, the chief of police, Crime Stoppers, family, friends, and people that don't even know her have been so supportive of us, and we are so grateful. My mother loved this city, and it's this has been really hard for us, but seeing the support has been so overwhelming and so touching, and we appreciate that. So please, if anybody knows anything, no matter how small it may be, please come forward. We need this. We need justice for my mother. Thank you. I just ask that to the people who know these people, imagine it being your mom or your wife or your sister or your cousin. It doesn't matter. Imagine it being someone you know and love. Please come forward because it's what you would want. She didn't deserve this. Please help. Anything. It doesn't matter how small, how minor. It all, it all helps, so please come forward. Someone knows something. Thank you. I just want to say that my mother had a lot, a lot of life left in her. She was not your average 62-year-old woman. She was really active and really healthy and did everything that she could to live a, a long, active life, to be with us. And that was taken from us. She has grand grandchildren and great grandchildren, <laughs> and some of them will never know how fun she was or how good she was. Of course, we'll tell them, but it's different to experience it firsthand. So if you know something, please come forward. Our family needs this. <laughs> Thank you. Let me just say that these family members represent the McKeska family, but they also represent many other families who are hurting and in pain. And again, let me encourage people, if you know something, and there are people in this city who know something, if you know something, I'm asking you to call Crime Stoppers or law enforcement, call someone today and help us to apprehend these individuals, okay? And not just on this one, but on other, for other crimes that have been committed in this city as well. Chief Fenner. Got it. Hey, thank you, Mayor. Uh, since I've been chief and uh, even before that, people call and they say, what can we do? What can we do to help assist in reducing the violence? Nothing happens in a vacuum when it's violent crime. Somebody out there knows something. I need all Houstonians to step up and bring forth some information where we can give this family, and you heard from them, and you see the pain. The mayor and I had an opportunity to speak with them before we came in. This was a mother, a grandmother, and a sister, a beloved member of our community that did one thing that morning, got up, and went to her gym where she goes all the time to work out. She shouldn't have lost her life. And as your chief, as the mayor has stated, and everybody else up here on this team, we're not going to stand by and let them win. We will get them in custody. And I think it's the right thing to do. So I'm asking Thursday, June 17th, we have had some tips coming in but not the one we need them. Bring them in. Thank you, Crime Stoppers, for all that you do. I want to show a, um, a video. I know some have seen it uh, before, but I, I just want us to look at this and every news team that's here, put it out there. And if anybody, any of our great citizens see this footage or heard anything, Call Crime Stoppers or call our Homicide Division. There isn't a reward. It shouldn't take that, but we need all the motivation we can. So uh, we'll, we'll show it. Who's, who's keying it up? Thank you.
So again, uh, a white, older model Chevy Suburban driven by three Hispanic males in their age of 20. Please, let's give this family some justice. Get the information in. I know in our great city somebody out there knows something. And when you see something or know something, say something. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. And then lastly, let me just say the madness doesn't stop until we as a community stop it, okay? And the madness doesn't stop just relying on police officers and law enforcement. The madness and the violence stop when the community as a whole say, this is enough. And then we start fighting back. And we fight back by giving the information and by saying there's no home, no, there's no safe place uh, in our city. And I'm asking people to provide the necessary information so we can solve this crime and so many others uh, that have occurred in our city. Having said that, uh, we'll stop and take a few questions. She was very involved in our lives. Like, I don't think one of us went a day without talking to her. She was at everything that she could be at for her grandkids. Um, even I moved to Iowa, and that's where I live. But we would FaceTime baseball games and football games, anything my kids did. She was on FaceTime watching. Um, she was just very healthy and happy and fit and loved life and loved Houston sports. Like, she was the Texan season ticket holder like through all the bad and she loved the good. <laughs> I mean, she was diehard. She didn't give up on her team like at all. She didn't give up on anything, honestly. Like it didn't matter what we did or or how things were going, she was always, always there for us. And I mean, we couldn't have asked for a better mother or grandmother or great grandmother. I mean, she really was the best. She never met a stranger. She would talk to anyone. She liked everyone and everyone liked her. We kind of, my sister texted me really late one night and was like, wow, mom really had a lot of friends. And I responded like, and they all have such good things to say about her. Like, not that it was shocking, but people really loved her. And I mean, we've been really overwhelmed with just how many people have reached out to us and do love her. And she absolutely loved her faith, so. Yeah, St. Helens Church in Pearland. She still worked, so she's not retired. Earlier this month, you were adamant that we are a safe city. Today, the homicide total sits at 222, 42% higher than last year. A record year for this century. Do you feel still that, as you said, that we are a hell yeah, a safe city? Yeah, we are a safe city, Mario, but if it's one crime, it's one crime too many. If it's one person, uh, that's killed in our city is one too many. Um, so it doesn't matter uh, whether you're 99% safe or whether it's one crime or whether it's 200. Uh, the reality is, is that you don't want one single family to be in McKeska's shoes. Not one. Not one. And it takes, it takes all of us working together uh, to prevent this from happening. And it doesn't matter whether or not it's happening across the country. What happens is right here. You don't want it to be, a, you, we don't want it to affect your street or your home or your family. So, you know, we can spend a lot of time talking about whether it's safe or unsafe. But let me tell you, when you, lose, when you lose a loved one, you've lost a loved one. And you don't lose it for just one day. It's a permanent loss and a permanent pain that does not go away. Well, I've, I've had a conversation about making sure that we utilize every available tool that we have. 
Uh, have we increased cadet classes? Yes. Have we increased the number of police officers? Yes. Are we utilizing overtime? Yes. Are we utilizing technology? Yes. Are we working with other law enforcement agencies from the FBI to constables to sheriff deputies? Yes. We're doing all of that. Uh, and are we increasing the award to try to incentivize people to do the right thing? Yes. Just like on this particular case. The reward on this particular case is $15,000. And uh, businesses are graciously given uh, to increase the reward on other cases as well. So we are doing all of that uh, and, and more, okay? But it also requires people who know have that, that have information on people who are committing these crimes. These crimes are not committed in a vacuum. Somebody knows about that white uh, SUV. That white SUV didn't leave the face of the earth. It's on somebody's street. Okay, in front of somebody's house or somebody's apartment. All of the, the victims of this crime, those who committed this crime, they got a name. They are somebody's brother or friend. So we all have a role to play. And that's why, as a community, um, we need to come together and address it. Chief Henry, you was going to say something. Okay. I just want to not forget about this moment while we're here. Um, and I want to be respectful to this family. Um, we have a lot of time to talk about strategies and all that, and I want us to respect that. They're standing here and they're standing strong, and I want to acknowledge them and give them credit for doing this. They've lost a loved one. So um, with that said, um, we're going to move on. Um, and if there's anything else that y'all need to hear from this family, let's do it. But we're going to be respectful today. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry, sir. No, just what we just what we showed up there. Thanks for asking. Well, the forensics Go ahead. on that car. If this actually happened in a particular uh, scenario where they want to zoom on the car, be able to get the plates and everything, they will do it within the city. What is stopping that? And if the FBI or whoever needs to come in, because I think somebody also has. Yes. Uh, resources to be able to go back into the cameras. That, that's a, on that camera, yes, sir. That that's a part of the investigation, and and let me tell you something. Nobody stands on anything. The minute we get some inf information, especially when it's dealing with a murder, we're gonna act upon it. And we're gonna act upon it quickly. So uh, I, I'm I'm confident that we'll get there. But for these individuals right here, because this is what's most important. Nothing else right now. Their pain and all the other families is in pain. So when we get that information, we're going to move swiftly on it and get some people in jail. I have a question for the daughter. Um, hi. Go ahead. Um, for maybe Lauren or, you know, anyone else who wanted to talk. First of all, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, obviously, it, today is in hopes to help the case here. But we also want to talk about the legacy that she leaves and the legacy that she's left your family. What's one thing that your mother has taught you that you think the whole world could benefit from in hearing her story? She always, she had always expected for us to be strong, come together and stand strong. And that's why we're here today. This is exactly what she would have wanted for us to do. And when you think about her and the lessons that she spoke, um, what is one thing that she would inspire others to do Known who she was and the values that she's um, She was just very big in her faith, and that's one thing that she would tell us to cling to during times like this. And so I think that she would want that for all of us, everybody. Yeah. Family is respectful. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so very much. Right. Can you speak on the 